Right, how are we doing, everyone? Sam here with another interview. This time I'm with German football writer Adam Kahn to speak about RB Leipzig and the fact that we are linked with seemingly their whole team. Uh, Christopher Nkunku, Conrad Lehmer, Nordi Mukieli, um, Amadou Haidara under Ralph Radnick. But how good are these players? You know, are, are we just getting linked to them for no reason? And Christopher Nkunku, who's just won Bundesliga Player of the Season, got to the Europa League semis, was knocked out by Rangers. But I want to speak about Nkunku because I think if you're looking at versatile forwards, he might be a really good solution for United. But Adam, I appreciate your time today, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good. It's really a pleasure to be here and, yeah, to talk about this this Leipzig setup and some interesting players. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, I think the Ra I think the Ralph Ragnick effect is definitely part of this whole, right, okay, let's get linked to every single Leipzig player. But if we're looking at a club that has a very, very good track record in the last few years of identifying players, bringing them through, turning them into world-class stars, it's the same sort of model that um, Borussia Dortmund have done. And they both do it pretty well, well than most. Uh, and Christopher Nkunku was a player that was brought in by Paul Mitchell. Uh, I think it was around about 13 million euros. And if you look at him now, Bundesliga player of the season. I don't know how many goals he scored this year. He scored so many. Uh, and he's linked heavily with a move to Manchester United. But how how good is he? How good is Nkunku? And how, how does his sort of start of play compare to other strikers around Europe? Yeah, I think just on the first point there, when you say that you're linked to so many Leipzig players, I mean, there's worse clubs in European football to say that we're linked to all their players, right? I mean, it's better than than saying, right. hey, we're, we're going for the Norwich City squad to find our, our next talent. So from that perspective, I wouldn't be too concerned. And on the point of Christopher and Cuckoo, I mean, the fact that he wins player of the season in a year where Lewandowski once again wins the Bundesliga title and scores more goals than games. Yeah, that just shows kind of the level of talent that Nkunku is. And, I mean, we say that he's a forward, right? But he's not really your typical center forward. He really drifts in between central midfield and his striking positions. And that's why you see such a healthy balance between goals and assists. 20 goals, 15 assists, and 34 matches in the Bundesliga. The same for European competition where he's maybe a bit more of a goal scorer there. But, again, two assists, 11 goals. So he's really contributing in both respects for Leipzig. And it's just how crucial he's been that, yeah, they were able to turn around a season where going into the winter break with Jesse Marsh, they were in, in 13 for 14. And now they're in the Dave Babelkoff finale, in the Europa League semifinals, narrowly got exited to Rangers, and of course made top four in another Champions League season. Um, and Kunku, when he arrived there, did he arrive more as a central midfielder than he did as, a, as, an, as an attacker? Has his role developed and sort of changed in the Leipzig system? Yeah, definitely. I think that's a, that's a key aspect of why he's been so impressive this season because under under um, Julian Nagelsmann, who was, of course, his first manager, he played primarily either as an attacking midfielder where you would see uh, a Bruno Fernandes or perhaps a Paul Pogba in United or for Leipzig where Dani Olmo plays now, or he played on the left wing in a position where he was almost entirely as a creative presence where he was largely crossing the ball into the attackers and wasn't necessarily getting on the go goal score sheet himself. But this year, with the Leipzig playing with a free 5 2, he is that link man between the midfield and the attack. And that's really given him freedom to drift into the left half spaces when he wants to, but also then be in the box where he can finish himself. Um, if you were to, so Manchester United, we, we obviously need uh, what we're looking at, I think, is, is a versatile forward. It's somebody who can support and play in that role if Cristiano Ronaldo doesn't play and needs a rest, or somebody who can also play on, on the right wing or, or centrally if needed. If you were to look at where and because we've got Eric Ten Hag as our new manager, we're yep. going to play it. We're going to play a four-two-three-one, and if you're looking at that number ten role, it's probably going to be Bruno Fernandez. So where do you think Nkunku would actually fit if hypothetically he was to join? Where would he actually fit inside this Manchester United system? Is it down as a right winger? Is he is he going to be playing more as a centre forward? Where where would he play? Yeah, it's interesting because I mean he can obviously come in for Ronaldo, but he's not going to be Ronaldo. He's not going to be the player who as a lone center forward, is going to be airily dominant, able to hold up balls. He really does need to play in a two up front. So from that respect, I see him almost playing then in that left half space as an inverted winger, something you've seen at least often with Jane Sancho in Germany, where he would kind of flirt into the inner channels when playing on the wing, kind of um, continue to swap positions with the likes of Marco Royce and Torgen Hazard. And you can obviously touch on this better as a United fan, but I think – giving him that that space in the left channel is almost like with, with Paul Pogba as well when he's played in those positions. That could be something that could, could be, yeah, could be a good formula for Nkunku at United. Um, 
I suppose the thing for United fans to understand about and Kunku, more importantly, Leipzig is, you know, are they prepared to sell him this summer? Because obviously, uh, when it comes to Leipzig, when it comes to Dortmund, it's part of their model of identifying players and eventually selling that player for a big profit and starting again. And, and they do it very, very well. Is, is this the summer that you think Nkunku will leave Leipzig or do you think it's a summer where they'll hold on to him? Because they only finished fourth. You know, Dortmund now have just sat Marco Rose, which has come as a bit of a surprise, right? Uh, so the, the, the chase is on, I suppose, to try and get Dortmund off the top. Sorry, not Dortmund, no, Bayern Munich off the top spot. But will Leipzig be holding on to their players this summer and trying to reinvest? Or is, it, is this the time when Nkunku is going to leave? Because maybe his value is not going to get any higher. Yeah, this is a really interesting question because I think there's so many different aspects that go into this. The first is, of course, then Kunku, from his perspective, he still has a contract until 2024. So Leipzig won't be in a rush like with some of the other players that we might mention in, in this analysis. And as you mentioned as well, the likes of Dahlman and Bayern. Okay, Bayern will remain with Nagelsmann. They, of course, still have a good squad, but there's still a ton of turnover. We don't know where Lewandowski's future lies. Muller, of course, signed a new contract, but there's still a lot of question marks. At Dortmund, right, they lost Erling Haaland. They they signed some very good defensive options, but they're still, again, not exactly a side that is ready to compete for a title. Marco Rosa, of course, um, sacked as well. So of those three, Leipzig is really the one that is the most consistent if they can remain with all their talent. And I think that's something that they will try and do. But, of course, if a good offer or an exceptional offer comes in for Nkunku or any of the other guys that had Leipzig, I mean, you look at the likes of Josko Guardiol or, or Conrad Leimer, Mukiele, these players who okay, they're key, but everybody has a price at the end of the day, then, of course, Leipzig will sell, as we've seen with Timo Werner and Avi Keita in the past. Um, and, and financially, uh, RB Leipzig completely fine. There's nothing else that would put pressure on them to sell players unless they just got the right offer in. Yeah, I think that of all your sides in German football, RB Leipzig is one of the most sound financially because they, of course, have corporate backing with so many other sides that abide by the 50 plus one rule in Germany do not have. And, I mean, they have a stadium which which they don't necessarily rely on to sell out. It's rarely ever sold out, and, and it's not necessarily a side that lives off the off the income from match days. So, from that respect, Leipzig is financially sound and also a side that has made a lot of money off transfer fees in the past, right? Selling on players for, for healthy profits, like which they will eventually do with Nkunku. So, from that respect, I don't necessarily see them needing to sell Nkunku this summer, but at the right price, he'll definitely be gone. Uh, and uh, I suppose final question about Nkunku is, uh, are Leipzig in a position where, is there somebody lined up, do you think? Is there somebody? Is there a name you would immediately go, right, okay, if Nkunku leaves, this is who Leipzig will get and they can start the process again? I think it's always, for example, with Nkunku, it's very difficult because Nkunku is now at the quality level where he's almost, he's, he's too far along from anything we've seen at Leipzig in the past, right? They sold Timo Werner, they sold Nabi Keita, maybe one season before where Nkunku is that, where Nkunku is truly a, a world-class player in this respect. So there isn't someone that's within the squad right now that can step up and, and have his output because we mentioned 20 goals, 15 assists, and 34 Bundesliga matches. That's that's really top level. That's your Mbappe's, your Lewandowski's, your Benzema's, right? So from that respect, there isn't someone that would readily come in. But as of so often with Leipzig, I mean, in every position, they have three, four candidates who – could be the next big talent, and we see it so often that, yeah, I mean, from a recruitment perspective, they, they do know how to get it right. Now, uh, as I said, I don't know whether this is just the RB Leipzig, sorry, just the Ralph Radnick effect, but we, we've we not just been linked with Christopher and Kunku, and there's no doubt that he could be these one of these star signings if he was to have, he was to be signed by Eric Ten Hag, but we've been linked to quite a few others, and there's one in particular that I would love to know some more information on, and maybe we can have a different uh, chat about this further down the line, but that's Conrad Lehmer. Now, uh, you, we, we spoke about him before we started, Henry, and you said that he was a player that's sort of, you know, kind of gone under the radar a little bit. And if we're looking at the position where Manchester United need to sign somebody the most, it's in that sort of role. Uh, now, I've taken a look at his stats. I've watched a little bit of him, not enough of him. That's what I'm going to speak to you about. He seems to be like uh, one of those quite active midfielders, a lot of pressing, a lot of movement. He's not really somebody who will just sit in front of the back four and screen the, and screen the defence. How, in, how integral is, is, is Lehmer? And is it possible that they sell both of them this summer or is it a case of like one or the other? Yeah, I think that should Leipzig sell a player this summer, I think it will be Conrad Lehmer just because he's also been in the club for quite some time now. He only has one year left in his contract. So this is kind of the window where you can make a profit off of him. 
And like you said, I mean, he is an exceptional midfielder, a real box to box type. You know what I mean? He's not a six, he's not an eight, he's not a 10. He's really all of that combined. And that's what makes him so impressive. And I think that, that like you said, right, he's also exactly what Man United needed because we've seen in that midfield, there hasn't really been any continuity all season or, or probably even since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has taken charge, there hasn't been any continuity. So I think that Conrad Leimer could really be the type of player that could take the side to the next level. And at, I believe he's 25 now or 26, he's also in that age bracket where he still has enough time left, but he's also not exactly a young talent who would need time to adapt and then come up to the level. He can be someone who can right away hit the ground running and elevate this Man United side. Because uh, if we look at it, the Eric Ten Hag system he's about to implement, he plays with a 4-2-3-1. He'll play with one midfielder who will typically be like a deeper line playmaker, someone like the Frankie de Jong type, yeah. type signing. And he'll play alongside one midfielder who will be like the ball winner, somebody yeah. who re recycles possession. Do you think that Conrad Lehmer could be that sort of player that plays alongside a Frankie de Jong and is, is somebody who's responsible for winning possession back and simply just recycling possession and, and moving it around is that something that he's very very good at naturally yeah i mean i think that that saying only a recycling possession type i think that'd be almost a bit disrespectful to what conrad limer can bring you right because he has ability to get forward to to influence the final third i mean i have here he has four four goals four assists in 26 Bundesliga matches and interestingly three of those goals and three of those assists came in matches against byron and dalman so he's a big game player that knows also how to get on the score sheet and I think that, that he has so much energy continuously. The guy at Leipzig who covers the most distance. And I mean, you're already at Leipzig, who's one of the sides in world football that covers the most distance. And if you're the player in that side that's covering the most distance, and that kind of shows you the type of athlete and, and the type of engine that Leimer has. So, yeah, I, th I think alongside a player like Frankie de Jong, a real progressive passer, someone who has a lot of calmness and, and, and composure and possession, that could really be a good fit. But I think um, that, that, I was just going to say real quick, yeah. I think that, as a lone DM, that's something that I don't necessarily see Conrad Leimer as. So I think that coming into a United midfield where you only have options like McTominay, like Fred, who themselves aren't necessarily that deep holding midfielder who who will win the ball back like a Nemanja Matic in his prime, I think that that's not necessarily something that, that will be a successful formula. So I think that bringing him in alongside of De Jong is something that could definitely be, be useful, but only him with the midfield that they have now isn't necessarily a winning formula. Well. Wow. You definitely know about United's midfield and our problems. Yeah. And I suppose they're kind of obvious for everyone to see. But yeah, yeah Conrad Lehmer, I mean, if, we, if, if, we, if I'm being completely honest and I'm looking at the options for our midfield, I'm probably looking at already and Chouameni from Monaco as like a standout <laughs> option. But I think United, given how much we have to do this summer, are likely to be outpriced in a move for him. I think he'll probably go to Real Madrid or maybe go to Liverpool. But Conrad Lehmer isn't the only midfielder, Leipzig midfielder, or the only Leipzig player we've been linked with. That's Amadou Haidara. How has how has Haidara's how has he been getting on for the last year or so? Because we were we were linked with him as soon as Ralph Radnick came in, nothing happened, and he was considered that sort of because we were trying to build. Well, we thought we were going to try and build towards the Radnick style of play: four triple two, two number eights, two number sixes, uh, actually properly pressing together, and that's where Haidara would have fit into it. Is he a similar sort of player to Conrad Lehmer? Could you just drop him into that role, or is he a different sort of player? Yeah, I think I think in in one respect he's very similar, but I think that he's a little bit more restricted in what he's capable of. I think that he is really that that recycled possession player. You're a Drusagana Gay type. I think that's kind of a good example of what he would bring to this side. And I think that he necessarily, if you're saying we're we're worried about a price side, for example, I think that Hydara would be your your perhaps a bit cheaper option. And I think that since since you guys were linked with him, he has had, had a bit of a stop start season at Leipzig. He was obviously at the Afcon with with uh, Mali, I believe, and um, then he had Corona, a couple injuries. So in the past six months or so, when Leipzig have really burst into form, he hasn't necessarily played a huge role. But he's a bit younger than than um, than Conrad Leimer, and he's a player also who can yeah have a big future at United. Albeit he won't necessarily be the player that that will take you to the very next level, or I don't necessarily see him being the player that can win you guys a Champions League. But hey, we never know. Uh, and in terms of in terms of price, because you, you spoke about Conrad Lehmer, he's only got one year left on his contract, so that would give an advantage to United yep. in negotiations. What would you what would you expect a fair price to be for Conrad Lehmer if he was to leave um, Leipzig this summer? And I suppose the same question can go for Christopher Nkunku. Yeah, I think that for, for Nkunku, it would have to be upwards in the in the... 75 80 million range right because we see we see um erling holland i believe moved for 75 million to to 
to Man City. And that was obviously in the final year of his contract. So if you kind of compare those two and say, okay, and Kunku with one more year is probably valued at the same value as, as um, Erling Holland without that extra year when they probably have to sell. So that's kind of how I would see that one. Versus for, for Conrad Limer, I would say around the, the 20 million range. He's obviously a bit older, so he doesn't necessarily have the resale value that you would hope for. He's also had a pretty lengthy injury, which he didn't necessarily touch on. But, of course, he had a big ankle injury in August, which saw him out for 237 days, missed 42 matches for life. So it's basically the entire 2020-21 season. And he's come back really well from that. But still, I mean, that's always a red flag for, for any potential suitor. And, and yeah, that will definitely bring his valuation down. So I think that around the 15 to 20 million range for Conrad Limer would be something that United should definitely target. And um, and you say that he's recovered well from that injury. It's not really sort of created any sort of, has there been any flare-ups of it at all? No, so I, I don't believe he's missed any matches this season, actually, which is obviously a positive. But, I mean, you never know, right? Especially going into the Premier League where, I mean, at this point in time, every top five league in Europe is super physical, but the Premier League is still something else. So, yeah, with that amount of fixtures and, and, and going through all through winter, right, you never know how that will necessarily come about. But I think that that shouldn't necessarily be too much of a red flag for United fans, although it's still something to to definitely touch on. Cool. Uh, well, the, the last player I'd like to, <laughs> the last Leipzig player I'd like to speak about, <laughs> having spoken about half the Rally squad, um, is, I suppose, similar to Lema. I believe he's going into the last year of his contract, and that's uh, Nordi Mukieli. Yeah. Um, I think he's. I think the same thing. His contract expires next season, and if Leipzig wanted to cash in on him, this would be the last opportunity for that. It, it, what sort of um, is he more of a wing back uh, than a, than a right back? If I'm looking at the success that he's had there, it seems like he's a very very aggressive, forward thinking uh, right back. But how is he defensively? How is he overall on that right hand side? Yeah, Mutiele is another really interesting one because he came to the club as a center back actually from from I believe it was uh, Montpellier two two or three years ago and now he's steadily just moved further and further up the field that's just the most leipzig thing in the world when you see just center bats ending up as right wingers at the end of the day that kind of shows you how leipzig wants to play football but yeah i mean he's not necessarily i, I don't know how familiar you are with the side but angelino on the left right he's more the attacking outlet so you will kind of see that three four two one formation kind of be shifted towards the left of angelino pushing higher and then um, Luke Yaley or Benjamin Henrich on the right, shifting back to almost make a back four at times. So it isn't necessarily a wing back role all the time, but when he does get forward, he can be very dangerous. I think just two weeks ago, he had a hat trick of assists against FC Outsport. So yeah, he's definitely capable of, of bringing something to the final third, which United definitely need for that right back position, because that's something that hasn't been there since Aaron Juan Basak has come. And then Luke Yaley could, could be a good solution. Uh, and again, it, it... I think he probably falls in the same category as Lamer is just a player that if Leipzig want to make money on him, it's, it's got to be this summer, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think that Mutiele is a player that they could end up moving on because he is kind of in and out of the squad a bit. Not like, um, not like Amadou Hadara, where you can definitely say he's lost his place because I mean, Leipzig also, like we said, they're in free competitions up to the very end, basically. So he's definitely gotten his game time, but we've seen more and more under um the new manager, Domenico Tedesco, who took over around January is that he's kind of been shifted out of the all important matches in favor of Henrich instead. So he'll normally play on the Bundesliga versus then Henrich will get the European features in the cup matches. So yeah, I think that he's definitely someone that, that could be a really smart signing for United, but again, wouldn't necessarily be, be classed as a marquee arrival that could really, really define the summer. And, and, and going back to one final note about Christopher and Kunku, because he is the headline potential signing from RB Leipzig. Um, do you, in terms of the physicality of his game, in terms of his own strengths and weaknesses, would you expect him to suffer the same sort of stuttery start that Timo Werner did in the Premier League with Chelsea? Or would you expect Nkunku to sort of hit the ground running uh, at Manchester United if he was to join? Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a difficult question always to answer, right? Who hits the ground running, who doesn't? I mean, look at Thiago from Liverpool, for example, right? How long he took to acclimatize versus now how impressive he is. Or then you look at other forwards who just bang in the goals early doors and then slowly fizzle out. So I think that that question almost always comes from, from a person-to-person -person basis and it's impossible to predict. But I think that Nkunku does have more facets to his game than Werner. We saw Werner a lot in Germany at Leipzig. I mean, he is entirely a system player, right? Running into the channels, running from central areas to wide channels and, and, 
just really becoming a, a top class goal scorer because he's constantly getting chances, not because he's clinical. Versus Nkundu, which I feel like is, is a bit more a better aspect of his game, is just how versatile he is, not just in a positional sense, but also in how he, how his impact in front of goal is. I mean, with the goals and assists that he can provide, he can be a creator or he can be a finisher. So he just has so much to offer where it's the fact that, okay, he may not necessarily be ready to play in that central forward position in the Premier League, but then we'll stick him out wide or we'll stick him in central midfield or we'll find a way where he can still impact the game. I like that. I like that a lot. Facets yeah. to his game. I can take that. But look, Adam, man, I, I appreciate it. You clearly know your stuff. Adam, uh, you, you live in Germany, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Who, who is it you support? I support Gladbach. So not a lot of not a lot of top class players from in Gladbach right now for you guys to pick off. We had a pretty poor season this year and we're one of many in Germany that ended up parting ways with our managers after the season. So hoping for better times than maybe we can come on here next next year where we talk about the 60 million export from Gladbach, which United might want to pick off. Oh, you never know. You never know. You never know. And we, we, and we can relate, obviously, as United fans, about yeah. managers getting sacked mid-season and then hoping for better. But that's where, that's where we're at. So good luck to, to you. I said uh, anybody who wants to follow Adam, I'll leave the link to his Twitter account in the description. But, Matt, I appreciate your time today. It's really good to sort of get some genuine insight onto Nkunku, Lema, uh, Mukiele, and, and, and Lima because it's hard for United fans to sort of I suppose, understand how they would fit in the system. And what you're saying yeah. there about Nkunku is he's he's more than just a system player. And that, that's that's quite a good thing. Uh, but obviously, Ten Hag's really going to have his system. So whoever comes in has to be able to play in that system. But look, yeah. I appreciate your time today, buddy. Um, uh, enjoy your summer. Enjoy no football because, you know, Borussia Mönchengladbach can't ruin your weekend just like United <laughs> can't, can't ruin our weekends now. But look, I appreciate your time. Uh, and I'll speak to you hopefully again in the future. Eh? Take it easy. Oh.